Hello, my name's Ruth and I'm from The Bump WA. This afternoon I'm planning just to have a brief chat with you about your choices for really your options for having your baby, particularly in Perth, because your options do change depending upon where you are. The first thing I will tell you is that I'm pretty bad at technology, so bear, me, bear with me when I completely um, don't talk to the right slide, but we'll give it a, a whirl and see how we go. If you do have any questions, please do ask me as you go along. I have a really, really bad memory, and I know that if I think of a question um, now, I will have forgotten by the time I speak, stop speaking, so do just um, give me a yell. Okay, so as I said, I come from the Bump WA. We're a not-for-profit organisation that's been around in Perth since 1996. We used to be called Community Midwifery Western Australia, so some of you might have heard of us um, before. And we provide education and support to pregnant women and their families. We have a range of antenatal workshops. We have a resource library. We have um, a higher services for birth pools, TENS machines, breast pumps. And we also provide postnatal support and lactation um, consulting for people who are wanting a little bit of support with breastfeeding. So really, why do we worry about our choices in pregnancy? Why do we worry about where we plan to give birth and who we plan to have with us? And the reason that we are very passionate about that at the Bump WA is because birth can be amazing. Having an empowering birth can really set you up for parenthood, can really set you up for the challenges ahead. Having a birth where you feel less than satisfied with the experience can in fact um, lead you more into um, postnatal depression and um, give you really a not particularly satisfying experience. So it's really important that you think carefully about what your options are. So the first thing you want to think about is what sort of birth do you want? When you imagine yourself giving birth, where do you imagine you'll be? Who do you imagine would be around you? What sort of equipment might you feel comfortable with? Um, it's really important to imagine that it can be very different for everybody. It's not the same to say, oh, well, my friend thinks this, so this must be right. It's very individual, and it just depends upon how you feel as to what it is that's going to be right for you. We have the first thing I think that most people would think about would be, where am I going to give birth? And we have a range of options in Perth. We could give birth in a, a number of private hospitals. And uh, there's also a number of public hospitals. When you're looking at public hospitals, you might be aware that um, you are allocated almost to your closest public hospital. And that is done by your postcode. Uh, so you can actually have a look at which hospital you would go to depending upon where you, where you live. We also have the Family Birth Centre. The Family Birth Centre is a standalone unit that is in the grounds of King Edward Memorial Hospital. And that is for women who are looking to have a more natural, homely um, environment for their birth, but aren't particularly keen on birthing at home. And as you can see, our last option is birthing at home. So when we're thinking about these different places, what sorts of things might we take into consideration? Well, the first thing you might consider is whether you want to see the same person all the way through pregnancy. Um, we do know that continuity of care, so that's having the same care provider throughout your pregnancy and birth, uh, leads to a more satisfying experience. And certainly with um, some of the private hospitals, you'll be seeing your same obstetrician all the way through, and that might be a reason for um, choosing that. You might also think about location. Where do I have to go to have my um, antenatal clinic appointments? How easy is it to get there? Um, this could be something that might uh, make you think about where, you're, you know, where you are going to birth. So there are a number of things that you might, you might consider. The next thing is to think a little bit about some of the people that might be providing your care. Um, so who, what are midwives and what do they do? Midwives are experts in normal midwifery. They're expecting pregnancy to go well, um, and they are trained to detect anything that is um, not expected, but their particular um, area of expertise is around the normal pregnancy birth and also the postnatal period. So you could be looked after by a midwife all the way through pregnancy, through your birth, and um, for up to a couple of weeks after you've had your baby. What's an obstetrician? What's an obstetrician going to do for you? Obstetricians are all highly skilled um, doctors who've gone on to do some extra training around pregnancy. They tend to look more at the um, complex issues of pregnancy. They're very good for um, things that are a little bit more tricky. Uh, there is some research that does say that if you are a normal, low-risk woman, uh, obstetricians do tend to be more interventionalists than the midwives if you're having a normal pregnancy. 
just mentioned low risk, and you might already have heard about that. You might hear people talking about being low risk. Well, what does low risk mean? Generally, to be low risk in pregnancy, it suggests that you're normally fit and well and healthy. You don't have any uh, medical conditions, any um, problems with your health. Uh, if you've had a baby before, that that pregnancy and birth went quite smoothly and there weren't any complications around that. One of the important things to remember, though, is that your risk factor can change during pregnancy. It might be that you start off completely um, having a normal uh, low-risk pregnancy and then maybe have an ultrasound scan and discover that, in fact, you're expecting two babies and not one. And that would change your risk factor. It might be as you're going through pregnancy, you, you become unwell or your baby um, is growing more or less than expected, and that can also change um, your risk factor. One of the other things that sometimes babies like to do is decide not to come head first and want to come bottom first, and that again would move you out of the low risk category. So although you may be low risk at the beginning of pregnancy, it might change as you go through. Okay, so who can provide that clinical care? We've talked to mentioned a little bit about the different hospitals and the different um, people that might be around. Um, but what about the models of care? You can have um, midwifery models of care, and they can be found um, in the Family Birth Centre at some of the, the hospitals that provide um, midwifery-led care. Armadale, for example, has a, um, a midwifery group practice, so you would be seen by a group of midwives throughout pregnancy. Um, other models of care would be obstetric-led care. This tends to um, be more in the private hospitals and some of the ho public hospitals. So that means that you would see an obstetrician at each, each visit, and you may well see a midwife um, some of the time, but it would be uh, led by an obstetrician. And the last one is really shared care, and that's a mixture between perhaps seeing an obstetrician and a midwife or seeing your GP and a, a midwife or an obstetrician. So there are a, a collection or a number of things that you might, um, might find yourself doing. So then thinking about, we thought about the, the clinical care providers, but what about the other people that might be along um, supporting you during birth? The first people that we've got there are, are doulas. Now, doulas are non-clinical birth support people, and they are there to support not only the lady in labor, but also her partner. Um, so they're not there to take over the support person's role. They're there actually to enhance that. They generally um, will meet you before you have the baby and come and see you a couple of times, and then plan to be there for the birth of the baby. As I said, they're there to provide support, but it's really nice to have somebody that you know and have met before to be there at your birth, and so they can be very helpful for from that point of view. The next group of people that you might um, look at uh, engaging are student midwives. The universities that provide midwifery education, the students all need to follow a certain number of women through pregnancy and birth. This is a free, um, free service and the students are allocated to you and they will come with you to antenatal appointments. They will come with you um, when you're in labor, having your baby, and they will also um, come and visit you once you've had your baby. It can be really nice, as I say, to have um, somebody that you know and you've met before being there in labor, and um, they can be a great source of support. As I say, those um, students are free, and if it is something you're interested in, you do need to ar arrange that and contact the universities um, before you get too far on in pregnancy, simply because if you're getting too far on in pregnancy, you won't have that chance to build up the relationship with your um, student. The um, last and really important group of people that are around you when you're having your baby are your, um, your loved ones, your support people. You know, who is it that you actually want to be there at your birth? Do you want your partner? Do you want your mom? Um, do you want your other children to be there? And this might actually affect uh, your place of birth. So you might choose to birth in a more um, friendly, uh, more homely environment if you are um, planning on having your, your children there. Because it's sometimes in a more uh, clinical environment, it's not very suitable for small people. Uh, so sometimes who it is that you're actually wanting to be with you can affect where you're choosing to birth. So what about cost? Is it going to cost me anything? I'm um, relatively stingy and uh, you know, like to know where my pennies are going. So it's really important to think about well, how much might this care um, that I'm looking at cost? If we're going into a private hospital and you have insurance, are there any gaps? Is there anything that I might be billed with? You know, I'd like to know that before I start. 
If I'm going into a public hospital, then most of that cost is provided by Medicare. If you're planning on birthing at home, we're pretty lucky in Perth to have a publicly funded home birth program, the Community Midwifery Program. So again, that would be funded by Medicare. Um, the last group of people that provide home birth that I didn't mention before um, are the uh, midwives working in private practice and they will charge a fee for their services uh, depending on uh, what it is that they're offering, depends upon how much they cost and I would certainly encourage anybody who's looking at um, uh, private midwifery to actually ask them their costs, what sort of um, payment options do they have and discuss that with them. I did talk about doulas before and didn't tell you that they also will cost. It depends upon, again, the services they offer and their experience as to how much they cost. And I would be discussing that with them before making a decision. So I think it is important just to think about costs because having a baby can be quite an expensive um, occupation, if you like, thinking about all the other things that you might want to buy for them. Something else that might affect your, um, your choices in um, having your baby is how much support will you get once your baby is born? How long will you stay in hospital for if you've got into hospital? Will a midwife come out and visit me at home? Um, whilst I'm in hospital, can my partner stay? Or will, he be, or, you know, will they be encouraged to go home in, at night? So these are things that it's really important to think about and this can affect your choices um, as to where you may wish to birth. Okay, so just to kind of go back, it is really important to think about what kind of birth do you want? Who do you want to be there? What do you imagine might happen? It's one of the most important decisions um, that we might make in life. Very rarely do we just go ahead and do something without doing some research, doing some thinking about what it is that we want and where we want to go. Um, so it certainly is important to, to have a think about that. We are um, at the bump, we are just around the corner at stall um, 84, F84, so if you do have any questions that you want to ask at the end individually, please do come and see us. And as I said, we do run a range of education workshops. And that kind of just says it all, really. It just says that, you know, some choices in life really matter. Um, and so it is really important to make this an informed choice. Okay, and also the last bit, just say that at the Bump WA, we are here to support you whatever choices that you make. So we're not here only to support you if you're birthing in a certain hospital. We're here to birth um, to support you wherever you choose to um, choose to birth.